Don in London, hello. July 14th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol. My behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be in the right place, with the right people, doing the right things, having the right things. Trying to fit in. Trying to be included. Trying to be what I thought you wanted me to be. And always, with the help of a drink in hand, being sociable and being a part of what was going on. Trying to be the life and soul of the party. These days, I realise the first drink did do the damage with me. The very first drink I ever took of a, an alcoholic nature. It changed the way I felt. Immediately. Warm, happy, convivial, joyful. It was all there. And as a consequence, I guess, for many a year, I learned how to fix myself using alcohol. Fixing how I felt, whether to feel good or bad about life as life was. So I'm just shutting down my email so it doesn't make noises. What have I learned? Well, how to be sober one day at a time and after a very long drinking career that felt like it was going to be impossible and I realised I couldn't do it on my own. That was my moment of clarity after many, many attempts to stop using my willpower. So self-will and willpower failed me because I'm human and if we don't know how to do something like get sober we need help I got help from family friends people in the community professionals especially medical people who said you do have a problem you, it will get worse you won't be able to stop on your own and some support is required why else would there be psychiatrists psychologists doctors lay people who are all involved in helping anyone overcome problems they face of a, an addictive nature. And then in the end I found, or it found me, not sure which, a fellowship which would help me. And that fellowship is and remains Alcoholics Anonymous. I never speak for AA. It's full of unique authentic people who speak where they will for themselves about their recovery. And that's just as it may be anonymity affords sanctuary to find out who we are on a daily basis. We don't need to parade ourselves if you like in order to prove and demonstrate anything. What happens as we get sober we just simply fit in and are included again in life. So some of us do share experience, strength and hope for a particular reason which is to share how life can improve how we can be a part of something again. I think it's called life. So I'm very lucky and very fortunate and I was asked to do these videos because a lot of people have no idea what AA may be. Don't forget whatever it turns out to be for you is your experience of life and AA. And that's the good news because whatever works with the fellowship where we get wisdom from other people is what counts. And if we're lucky we make friends. If we're lucky we start to see how we can fit back into life or life keeps on happening and we fit into it in a very natural way. We become involved in a part of life again and we stop being self-centered in a way which is unhelpful that we cannot see beyond whatever it is we're addicted to. How does AA help me? Well there's a, a little card which is available in lots of meetings and it has the AA preamble on and I'll share it so you know exactly where I'm coming from. But also for me a good reminder of what AA does for me on a daily basis and for that I have gratitude. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So that's partly why I do it in that last sentence. Primary purpose to 
is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And the other part of it, where AA is not allied with anything, the good news is everybody in AA has alliances and belongs to something outside the fellowship. After all, the fellowship is there for sobriety, so we may conduct ourselves as best we can on a daily basis in our daily living. So it's not about joining something to become something else or a different person in the sense of changing our alliances or allegiances. Fellowship offers sobriety to make the best of who we are on a daily basis. And sometimes the best can be really fantastic for us and other people, or it can be awful and terrible for other people because we have the same problems on a daily basis as anyone in the whole wide world. And those problems that we face on a daily basis are conditional on our current life experiences. And most of us in recovery, when we first get there, are having a pretty terrible time. It's something that we don't want to do because we don't want to give up our best friend, alcohol, or any other substance that we've come under the sway of, I guess, become addicted to. And the same goes for behaviour. So it could be drugs, food, behaviour around doing, doing things obsessively and hoping that we can feel better about our lives because of, because of it. So these days I'm trying for balance. Um, if I find balance in what I'm doing and where I'm living and who I'm with, then all well and good. It's life on life's terms. Sometimes wonderful, sometimes sad, and often just in between. And many a time, nothing particularly exciting happens other than I have an ordinary day, which is extraordinary. Because it works. Life works in recovery. Simple as that. But I do know all those dark days when I couldn't get well. <coughs> and I covered up. I went to ground, found places where I could just shut the curtains, lock the door, turn the telephone off, never answer the mail, and wish I wasn't there anymore. Or just wish I wasn't here anymore. So, on a daily basis, when we start to get away from the addiction into recovery, and for some it's straight away, and for others, like me, it took quite a while to actually understand I needed to go through several stages in order to get well. And the first one was recognising what was going on for me, then realising I can't believe it, I don't want to do this, it's just too hard, which is about denial, so that I was ignorant then in, in denial. And then many, many cycles of depression through to acceptance of I need help on a daily basis to help me keep sober and if I keep sober life will start to work again it doesn't mean it's going to be easy it was the hardest thing I've ever done and I needed help so the fellowship provided the backbone of support and now I get my wisdom and experience strength and hope from wherever it comes it can be from the person I sit next to on a train it can be the person who writes to me and says whatever they say and I can feel right about what they say and understand what they say or write to me. Anyway, I share something of the daily reflections from the fellowship and also some thoughts of mine too. And July for me is all about step seven which is about my shortcomings being removed contingent on the day I ask. So my shortcomings primarily are around not having enough faith, courage and confidence to face reality. So I need to improve my faith, courage and confidence daily by being open about what I don't know. And humility is the keystone, the humility to keep on learning, to get hot on the under the collar from time to time when I don't know and suddenly feel the shame and guilt of ignorance again. Or rather, these days, I don't get hot under, under the collar, because it's, there is no shame or guilt in not knowing. But I think I would feel more shameful and guilty if I didn't find out, and needed to find out, 
what was going on or what I needed to know. So the AA daily reflections for today. A nourishing ingredient, 14th of July, where humility had formerly stood for a forced feeding on, hum on humble pie, it now begins to mean the nourishing ingredient which can give us serenity. And there is serenity in not knowing and then finding out. Because it means it's okay not to know things. And I never knew how to get sober, let alone anything else. And had to relearn how to live life in the company of other people. How often do I focus on my problems and frustrations? When I'm having a good day, these same problems shrink in importance and my preoccupation then with them then dwindles. Wouldn't it be better if I could find a key to unlock the magic of my good days for use on the woes on my bad days? I already have the solution. Instead of trying to run away from my pain and wish my problems away, I can pray for humility. And, you know, praying or an exhortation or a meditation to, I need to keep on learning. I don't know this and it's okay not to know. I need to find out. And finding out is where we keep on going, find our inclusion back in life. Humility will heal the pain. Oh, have I missed a bit? No. Humility will, will heal the pain. Humility will take me out of myself. Humility, that strength granted to me by that power greater than myself, which is learning from others, wisdom coming through other people, is mine for the asking. All I have to do is ask. Humility will bring balance back into my life. Humility will allow me to accept my humanness joy joyously. And after all, when we're young and growing up, we do learn so much. We, we learn to speak, we learn to deal with the hazards of life, we learn to read, write and do our arithmetic, if we're lucky, if we're fortunate enough to be in school long enough to st stick around and find out. But often the pain of that learning can mean that we are cut off so that's just some thoughts from the fellowship and me and today with humility no need to cover up any more when I don't know something I don't know and try to find out progress and not perfect I may feel awkward often and can say so and then no need to feel hot under the collar or feel less than those who know it all today and we do meet people who know it all mostly they know all of their personal prejudices about how life should be. We don't have to knock them down for it because it's obviously working for them and they feel okay about it. All we need to do is find where we feel okay and keep on learning how we like to be today. From other years, feelings and thoughts. Feelings happen in the moment. Feelings happen now. And then sometimes my brain is ca playing catch up because I don't like the feelings I've got. Feelings as life can be difficult. Feelings first, then we think our best response. So if somebody turns up out of the blue and says, I love you, what do we do? I don't know what we do. Often I spend a lot of time thinking, what should I say back? I don't know what my feelings are. And it's okay, I don't know what my feelings are. And then start to work on it and have a dialogue. Truth is a key in all our actions. To love, be loved and useful always are, is always in our action. So to love people, be loved back is something we keep on learning all the time. We just keep on learning it. We don't know the answers when we don't know the people. Yes, to thine own self be true so others may be true today. So it's okay not to know what your feelings are because feelings have been suppressed often for so long we don't know what they are except one maybe which is fear fear of being found out and not good enough so often we reflect back what people say to us without really understanding what's going on inside and it takes time to do this so if I can say to myself on, in the morning when I wake up how am I feeling, why and what can I do I have a chance how am I feeling, why and what can I do? And I feel okay 
today I feel a bit tired I can't work that one out as to why probably to do with uh, one or two ailments I have going on to another year ever so humble it was an expression in a Charles Dickens novel and I can't remember the character right now it was on the tip of my tongue and now it's gone away again humility is different not proud or haughty not arrogant assertive without being prideful able to state our case reflecting what's going on expressing what's going on offered in a spirit of deference to the truth of now so when I say offered in the spirit of deference when I share my opinion and belief which is what I do here I know it's probably my attempt to get nearer to the truth but the truth comes from listening to the many voices in recovery and what is right for you and I kind of wouldn't want to argue with that at all higher power truth that is the truth, love and wisdom we get from everywhere evolving with love and wisdom in good conscience because we all have a good conscience we know what is right we really do we just maybe don't like it sometimes because it just means that life is so hard always in this day and that's what I've learned about recovery something around the spiritual principles to live life real these are the spiritual principles that the fellowship is all about really and it would take a lifetime to explain them I suspect but the first one that comes is forgiveness forgiving ourselves for what we've done it means we need to forgive others for what they've done there will be consequences always around that acceptance acceptance of life on life's terms life as it is today and sometimes I have to play catch up on that surrender to not knowing the answer surrender to accepting help from others faith as it comes to you faith in what will happen next the next right thing doing the next right thing open mindedness meaning I'm not closed down I'm not trying to have it my way honesty to be honest with oneself and get feedback about it willingness willingness to keep on learning the moral inventory the life story of where we got to with our drinking and how it hurt ourselves and other people where it showed we had areas to work on in living life making amends where we can making restitution humility keeping on learning persistence that's the courage to keep maybe going when life is really difficult spiritual growth for me always about living in the moment no matter what one believes in what your faith is is your faith don't lose it and that's also about an understanding of God in your life or not and just working to good conscience or living to good conscience it's a choice to the positive rather than the negative and knowing we make progress and we're not perfect and the concept or the principle of service helping others to get into recovery or to be able to live their lives as they choose without judging them that can be so difficult but those spiritual principles work in the moment they don't work in hindsight hindsight will give us the benefit and wisdom and make us more skillful I guess in our actions life is not easy <clears throat> M. Scott Peck said that I think that's the life is not life is difficult is what he said in his book The Road Less Travelled first sentence and often we don't read complete books because we don't need to if we, re if we write our life story as part of our 12 step recovery work learning how to be in recovery we are doing the same it's our own personal life story which becomes our history and our understanding of what happened in the past it's our book of life and we keep on writing new pages as we go along small incremental sometimes big steps as, so, as the penny clicks and something well the penny drops rather not clicks something clicks in our mind and we understand it and then the penny drops and we get to understand a little bit more about where we're headed and when we don't know the serenity prayer 
or an exhortation or meditation to can do, can't do and learning wisdom works for me anytime when life is good or life is in need of progress the prayer to God or in good conscience grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference always in the moment and just for today <laughs>